Hello, I'm Scott. I hope you've been enjoying this series called Deep Dive with Logos. Now at Logos, we use technology to equip the church to grow in the light of the Bible. And one of our primary focuses is creating tools and resources for pastors, preachers, and ministers to proclaim the gospel. And two of the best tools in Logos 10 that work together for sermon and teaching prep are the Sermon Manager and the Sermon Builder. The Sermon Manager helps you plan and track your sermons. With Sermon Manager, you can filter your sermons according to scripture reference, sermon series, or their primary topic. And with Logos 10, you can now import past sermons into Logos. Yes, you heard me correctly. You can now import all of those old messages into Logos and integrate them into your searching. Now, a Sermon Builder, you can craft your entire message in Logos, including your sites. This efficient tool allows you to do multiple things. Write your sermon, add key points from your sermon to your handouts, and even create discussion questions from your sermons for your small groups. Imagine creating multiple things from a single sermon. That's efficiency at its best. And the new popular quotes feature puts over 1 million of the best quotes at your fingertips. Now, let me show you the basics of the Sermon Manager and the Sermon Builder. And remember, Logos has great free training videos to take you even further with these tools. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a preacher, but I created a sermon calendar as an example to show the benefits of these tools for you real pastors and preachers watching. Now, let me share my screen. And there you see Logos 10. Now, the way that you access the Sermon Manager tool is by simply going here to the toolbar, clicking the word Tools, and it could either be at the top. It's one of my favorites, so I've put it or pinned it to the top of my favorite tools or under the header of Content, scroll down, and there you'll find Sermon Manager. Now, when Sermon Manager first loads up, the default view is the weak grid. I kind of liken it to a spreadsheet view. I used to do this way back in the day uh, when I was in youth ministry, uh, but this was a preaching calendar for 2020. Uh, let me show you what a blank slate would look like. Let me jump to 2025 because I've already kind of created 2024, but load up the year and it will go ahead and populate the weeks, and then you start building out your preaching calendar. So let's jump to 2024 so you can see uh, what this is and the potential of this amazing tool. And you can see here, starting next year, the week of January 7th uh, through 13th, and I clicked on the sermon called Wealth, and it launched Sermon Builder. So again, this is the way that Sermon Manager and Sermon Builder integrate. Now we're going to kind of look a little bit deeper at Sermon Builder in a moment. But again, I wanted to show you that if you click any of the sermons as you are building your preaching calendar, it will launch Sermon Builder for you to build that sermon. But again, this is my view of 2024. Now, I want you to pay attention to the right side of the screen because for each of these messages, uh, you want to spend a lot of time over here on the right adding information about your sermon. So there's the title of this message. It's part of a series, as you see here, a five-part series called Generosity. This is the first in that series. And then I've added these topics. Uh, this message is about wealth and money and idolatry. And you want to spend some time thinking through what you preach in this message and add the appropriate topics. Because what happens is over on the left, I want you to see these filters over here. So if I really quickly wanted to see, as I scroll down here, all the messages that I've got planned for 2024, uh, where I talked about evangelism, one click here, and what I'm looking at now are the three messages uh, that I talk about evangelism. I've got a message Second week of January, part of that generosity series. Uh, I'm going to jump into the book of Mark. I talk about evangelism. And then way down here, when I talk about community, I talk about evangelism well. So this is the value of the sermon manager 
not only so that you can get this incredible view of your preaching calendar year, but again, as you start adding topics and references, you can filter on those. Now, let me jump back to 2024. Uh, and I want to go ahead and go back to all. I'm not looking at evangelism per se anymore, but I want to look at everything. And so here again, we're now going to look at 2024. So again, you want to spend some time uh, over there on the right, adding not only topics, but the key passages uh, that you are going to discuss or preach from and so on. You can add a description. Notice here as well, duration. What is your goal? Uh, 30 minutes, 45 an hour. I mean, that's your target, right? Uh, you could have some private notes. You can even add links. So this is an actual link to a church website. This is the church that I attend. And there is the message uh, on wealth from the series called Generosity. You would obviously add you, yourself as the speaker, the, the date, uh, where this is going to be preached. You could add a service time. Uh, if you're following a liturgical calendar, you can add that information as well. Now, I want you to notice that this message is planned because it's for next January. But notice what happens when I start moving the date around. You know, if I jumped real quickly here uh, to uh, a closer date. So let's go ahead and say I want to go ahead and uh, I went a little too far. Sorry about that. Let's go to November of 23. And let's say I want to go ahead and preach that uh, this weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and say the 12th. And notice now it says in progress, because I'm actually working on this to preach this uh, this coming Sunday. Again, if I select the calendar and I go, you know, a, a week or two out, then it goes ahead and says this is upcoming. Uh, or if I don't have any date in here, it would say idea, because sometimes you might have some sermon ideas uh, that you don't know when you're going to preach them, right? So I love the fact that based on the date that you mark the sermon, uh, over on the left, you can filter based on ideas, what's in progress, what's upcoming, and so on and so forth. So that's the value of using Sermon Manager to build out your preaching calendar. Now let's jump to the very bottom of my 2024 calendar. And I noticed down here that I've got a message uh, on the week of December 29th through January 4th that I have not uh, put any information. Now there is some blank spaces here. This was sabbatical per se. Uh, I took a couple weeks off here. So, uh, you know, most of you don't preach every single Sunday. So that's what you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, but I do want to preach a message, let's say, around the first of the year. So let's go ahead and select that bar. And now I need to start adding my information about the sermon. Um, so I'm going to title this sermon, uh, you know, The Gift uh, of a New Year. God's Gift of a New Year, okay? Uh, it's not going to be a part of a series because it's one message I'm preaching uh, at the new year. Uh, but topics, yes, there are some topics that I'm definitely uh, going to focus in on. And so, you know, having a plan uh, for next year, uh, what would be, how about uh, spiritual disciplines? You know, I'm going to talk about you know, um, um, spiritual discipline. Uh, I'm going to talk about prayer and Bible reading as a as a goal for next year. Um, let's say vision. Um, I would say, uh, how about growth? So again, think through your message, and you want to add, uh, you know, things that uh, are particular to the message, not only topics but also passages. So. The verse that I want to focus for, uh, to make my focus for this particular sermon, uh, is Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, uh, there it is. And so that's going to be the passage that I preach from and kind of use as my focus for this message. But again, the more time you take to put in the key topics, the key passages, and so on, what this is doing is going to help you down the road with your filter. I mean, imagine using this tool for four or five years and you can instantly find, you know, wh when did I talk about generosity? Uh, when did I preach from 
Deuteronomy or Genesis or Jeremiah and so on. So over time, this is going to be incredibly valuable for you to find those messages and those past topics you talked about or key passages and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the value of Sermon Manager. Now, again, this is the weak uh, grid view, or again, I liken it to kind of a spreadsheet on the screen. But notice in the right-hand corner of the screen, you can also view this with the filter called the radio counter. Now, what I like about this is I'm able to see my entire preaching year in a single view. Now, another valuable thing is you can actually select a calendar. So I could have the calendar turned off. But if I wanted to see uh, the various holidays for look at all these various countries. So if you're in Australia, if you're in Belgium, uh, Botswana, you know, Cambodia, you can actually add the calendar for the nation that you're in. So I'm in the United States. And voila, I now on the outside of the radio calendar view, I'm seeing the holidays for 2024. Kind of, uh, you can see them with these kind of dark blue marks. So there's Cinco de Mayo uh, right here. May 12th is going to be Mother's Day. Uh, Juneteenth is June 19th of 2024. So you might want to preach a message uh, appropriate to the holiday uh, that maybe that Sunday falls upon or that week or so on. Um, so again, the calendar option is a great option. But again, this is Sermon Manager. Uh, again, you've got the week grid view. This is kind of the spreadsheet view where you add in your title, your series, your passage, your key topics, and so on and so forth. Uh, you've got the radio view as well, but this is a great way for you to map out your preaching calendar. Now, let's go ahead and jump to Sermon Builder. Now, let me show you where this tool resides. Again, it's one of my favorites, so I've pinned it to the top up here where my favorite tools are. But if I scroll down a little bit, right uh, above Sermon Manager is Sermon Builder. And you can start with a blank slate. So I'm just going to build a message, right? Uh, but let me show you how we've integrated Sermon Builder into other features and tools within Logos. Now, you know, if you've watched any of these deep dive videos, that Scott's favorite feature is Factbook. So let's jump to Factbook and again, type in the passage that you're going to be preaching from or the topic. You pick the pericope you want to focus on and Factbook brings you a quick commentary. There's some media, but if you scroll to the bottom, there's the section called Dig Deeper. Now, I'm going to launch the Sermon Starter Guide because, again, Sermon Manager and Sermon Builder, a little bit more of a tool set for those that preach and teach. So let me go ahead and launch the Sermon Starter Guide. Very similar to Passage Guide, but very focused on sermon building. So uh, preaching commentaries, topical analysis, outlines of the text. Uh, but if we scroll down a little bit, I want you to see the section here called thematic outlines. Now, uh, thematic outlines is an incredible tool that will take the primary themes out of the passage that you put into the fact book. And then we went over to the sermon starter guide. And I see there's a theme called the centrality of the cross. Now I'm going to open that up. I read the synopsis and I think, yeah, that's a, that's a great synopsis. I would like to preach on the centrality of the cross. Now, what I want you to notice at the top of thematic outlines, you have to let us know where do you want to put this. Now, some of you are a bit old school and you still do everything. Uh, your sermon writing in a word processor could be pages, could be Microsoft Word, and then you hit print and you go to the pulpit with paper. So if that's you, make sure that you're going to copy this to Word. And notice as I hover kind of right at the title of that theme or that message, uh, hit copy and Logos will go ahead when you go to your word processor, it will actually throw the entire message into the word processor. Now notice too, that it looked up every cross message, okay, uh, every cross reference. Uh, so every passage that is in this message called the centrality of the cross 
is right there. I can save it. I can print it. Uh, but how incredible, again, to have all the passages automatically looked up. Now, that, again, would be for someone that builds their message in a word processor, hits print, and goes to the pulpit. However, uh, I want to show you the power of Sermon Builder. There's a, this tool in Logos that allows you to build your whole message within Logos. So I'm going to go ahead and select Sermon. And now when I hit copy, what you'll notice is we take that thematic outline and we throw it over to Sermon Builder. Now, I hope you notice real quickly, what was the other thing that happened? Sermon Builder actually created all the slides. I don't know about you. I like teaching. I like preparing. I like to write messages. Uh, what I'm not good at, what I don't like doing is those PowerPoint slides. Okay, so... Logo Sermon Builder automatically creates your slides. Now, you might be saying, Scott, you know, I, I kind of don't like that look of those slides. So watch this. Right click on any slide and you have the edit option. So go ahead and click edit. Logos will load up the media tool, which is the tool that built the slides. And I want to find some different media. So notice that button right there it says find media. And we right now are at 900 plus different backgrounds. So you choose the background uh, that looks good to you. You know, I live here in the Pacific Northwest. Maybe I want some trees and a mountain in the background. Uh, maybe uh, you want something a little bit more contemporary or you like to show the Bible on the slides. But I like this one right here. Kind of a it's kind of a cityscape skyline. So I'm going to select that get to see a preview of what it looks like. Hey, I like that. And so now I'm going to say update media. Now, it only changed the one slide because sometimes I do want different slide backgrounds uh, for different points in my message, but I want them all the same. So now I'm going to right click and I've got the option to apply this style to all the slides. So one click and every slide just changed. Okay. So again, one of the amazing things that Sermon Builder does is create your slides. Now, now that I have this over here, I could go ahead and, and put in those topics and key passages and, and again, use this as a basis. So this is one of the ways that you can get to Sermon Builder is from thematic outlines, either in the Sermon Starter Guide or in the passage guide. Okay. So this is one of those ways that we kind of connect those dots from an outline to sermon builder. Now, let me show you as well, though, that in sermon manager now, let me close all, there is a probably one of the top 10 most talked about new features in all of Logos 10 is the ability now to import old messages into Logos. So again, you can be looking week grid view or radio calendar view, but now I want to go find an old message uh, that's been sitting on my hard drive, and I want to bring that into Logos. So from Sermon Manager, go to the right corner. You see those three little dots there, and there is the new import option. So I'm going to click Import. Now, you can also bring in a sermon schedule, but I want to bring in an old message. So I'm going to go ahead and go find that file. Uh, there's my sermons folder, and I want to bring in this message from 2020 called Basics of Prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and now I'm going to say open, and took a couple seconds, and it brings it in. So click done, and it launches Sermon Builder. And look what it did. There's that message from that Word doc, created the slides and so on. Um, incredible. Now, you can bring in more than one message. You can bring in 20 at a time, 30 at a time. So again, if you've got one of those folders on your desktop that says sermons or messages, and you've got hundreds of messages over the years, you can now bring them into Logos. Now, let me show you some of the other features inside of Sermon Builder. Uh, again, you're going to want to take some time uh, to go ahead and add the key passages, which it did automatically, incredible, but the key topics, you know, what, what is this message about? Well, 
you know, this message is about prayer. Uh, it's about maybe intercession. Maybe it's about faith. And so again, add the appropriate tags. Maybe it's part of a series. I did want to point out as well that you can create in Sermon Builder a template. So if you have a pretty systematic uh, way that you build a message, you know, the church that I attend, our pastor will read the text, and then there's always, you know, two to three points. Um, if that's kind of your way of preaching and teaching, you could build your template and just go ahead and load that up and, and just start building your messages from kind of your standard template. Um, but let me show you some of the things that you can do once the message again is over in Sermon Builder. Um, one of the things you can do is um, add some notes. So again, it's your message. So, you know, I'm going to put a little note here, you know, tell, uh, tell the story um, of God um, uh, answering um, a key prayer. Okay. You know, uh, back in, uh, back in, in 2010. Okay. So I'm, I'm writing my message, right? Um, notice as well. So again, this is kind of a word processor inside of logos. That's what sermon builder is. Um, so you're writing your message. Now you can also, uh, create slides. Like if you want this particular, uh, passage reference to actually be a slide, just highlight, uh, click that little button there. And logos just went ahead and made a slide of that, uh, passage first Thessalonians. So again, you can Go ahead and decide what you want to be a slide and, and maybe not to be a slide, but your, your choice. Uh, but let me show you now one of the most uh, amazing features of Sermon Builder. You know, in my intro, I said, wouldn't it be amazing to write one message and from that message create uh, all kinds of different content, right? So watch this. You know, as I'm, um, as I'm writing this, uh, the way that my church is structured is we have small groups and what we do when we meet during the week is we talk about our pastor sermon on Sunday. So if you're a pastor that uh, creates small group resources uh, for the Bible studies and small groups and so on, you know, because this message is about prayer, maybe a question that I think would be intriguing for that week's discussion is what does your prayer life look like today? Okay. Now, this isn't going to be part of my message. I'm not going to say this from the pulpit. It's going to be part of the small group handouts that I create. So watch this. I've written the question um, from my sermon, and I'm going to highlight it. And I want you to notice up here, first of all, that you've got all the standard kind of word processing function. You can bold, italicize, change your font, and so on and so forth. Uh, bullet points, uh, you can number things. But right here are these two buttons. One is called include in handout, and another is called include in questions. Now, handout would be maybe something that you put inside the bulletin. Uh, questions are those small group resources uh, for Bible study, small groups, and so on. So I'm going to click this button, and I want you to notice that Logos kind of color-coded that, and it did something with it. Now, now, what do you mean it did something with it? Scott, well, right now, I'm in the edit function of Sermon Builder because I'm writing my message, right? Text is the sermon itself. This is what I'm going to go to the pulpit with. Now, again, you can go to the pulpit with paper by simply uh, clicking this ex export button and go into Word or whatever word processor, right? I'm going to show you another amazing feature where you can actually take this message and go to your tablet. Um, but again, this is your message. This is the sermon you're going to preach. Here are your slides. This is what you're going to export to your video person that, you know, moves through the slides in the back of the room. But notice there's two options here, handout and questions. Remember, we highlighted that one sentence. What does your prayer life look like today? Because I wanted that to be for the small group resources that I'm developing. And because in my message, I highlighted that and click that one little button there, it's now in this section called questions. So here's the big idea. As you're writing your message, think through what do you want to be in a bulletin? What do you want to be in small group resources? But the big idea again is, 
in the single process of writing a message, you're doing multiple things. You're writing your message, the slides are being created, your bulletin or handout uh, is being created, and your small group resources are being created. Now, here was the big feature I said at the very end of the intro that everyone is talking about, especially preachers and pastors, is this new feature in Logos where we built in 1 million plus of the best quotes for your sermon. Okay, so where is this? It's this little button right here, popular quotes. So go ahead and click that little button there, popular quotes. And again, this message is about prayer. I'm going to type in the word prayer. It is now scouring through a million different quotes, and it just found all the great quotes on prayer. Look at all these great quotes on prayer. Now, I'm going to stop here because I found this one the other day by Martin Luther, who said, prayer is the sweat of the soul. Oh, I like that. I want that in my message. So you simply drag that quote where you want it, let go, and look what Logos did. It created the slide, okay? Prayer is the sweat of the soul by Martin Luther said that, right? Now, I want to show you something that you can do for handouts. So I'm going to say that from the pulpit. Prayer is the sweat of the soul. Martin Luther said prayer is the sweat of the soul. But I want to make sure they're paying attention. So first of all, I want this to be part of, again, my handout. So I'm going to go ahead and click my handout button. And now it's blue. Blue means something I've designated for the handout. Green down below is what we've designated for questions. That's my small group resources. So again, if I click handout, there is that sentence. But watch what you can also do. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the word sweat little box appears. I want that to be a fill in the blank. And then I also want to do the same thing with the word soul. And I'm going to say fill in. So now when I go to handout, ah, are you paying attention? Okay. So this is those notes. You know, we do this at our church in the bulletin. We leave some words out of the key sermon points. Uh, now you can bring the answers back in or hide the answers. But again, the big idea is you're writing one message, here's your sermon, here are your slides, but at the same time, you can be thinking through the message and deciding what you want to export or go to the bulletin or what you'd like to export or go to the small group resources. So that's popular quotes. Now, that's typing a topic in popular quotes, but you can do something else. Um, you see all those names there, Spurgeon, Wearsby, and so on. So you know, I'm a huge fan of Tony Evans. So I'm going to go here, type in Tony Evans. And what we're doing now is just looking for Tony Evans. So now that I see there's all the quotes here by Tony Evans, I'm going to now click on Tony Evans. I want Tony Evans to be my only source. So I click on Tony Evans. And now when I go back in here and type in prayer, you know what Logos is doing? I'm only looking at the quotes by Tony Evans on prayer. So if I see another one that I like, um, let's see here. Uh, what's a good one here? Um, here we go. If you find yourself doubting God, let this man's cry be your prayer. Be honest with God about your doubts. Proceed in faith and God will honor your faith and strengthen it. Great quote. I want it my message. I go ahead and drag it right where I want it. Let go. And voila, creates the slide. And there's the great quote by Dr. Tony Evans. So again, popular quotes, you can either type in a topic or you can type in a person you're looking for and then search just what that person said. So that's the power of Sermon Builder. Again, it works with Sermon Manager. Um, and let me show you the one other thing. Uh, I said old school. There's still a lot of you that still hit print and you go to the pulpit with paper. Uh, but there is a feature in Logos now called Preach. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and click this button. And what Logos does is sends this if you have a tablet uh, and it sends it to your tablet for you to go to the pulpit with your iPad, your Android tablet, what have you. Uh, and this is amazing because watch what you can do once you've hit preach mode. 
You can designate the time. You can say, hey, look, I want you to flash on the screen at the one to two minute warning, you know, flash again when it's over, hit start timer, start preaching. You can go ahead and have your slides lined up with your message so you know kind of where you're at uh, with the big screens. Uh, and then you can change, do you like to scroll through your message or do you wanna page through your message? Change your font, your font size. Uh, but again, this is an amazing feature in Logos that allows you, again, if you are comfortable or have been have been uh, using your tablet from the pulpit, you now can do that with Logos and the Sermon Builder uh, with this amazing feature called Preach. It's also on your ta uh, on your iPad. So if you have an iPad, uh, this is a feature that you'll see over there as well. Uh, but for those of you that are kind of, uh, you know, running with the, the the new tech. This is a great feature now that would allow you again uh, to actually just kick the message over to your tablet. Now, showed you Sermon Manager, showed you Sermon Builder. Let me just show you one other thing. Where are all these sermons that I'm creating in Logos? Well, they're documents. So let me just show that if you click Documents, and here are all the various documents that you can create in Logos, reading plans, passage lists, and so on. Uh, but there is the type sermon. And these are all the messages that I've built in Logos using Sermon Builder. And so if I wanted to go right back, back to that first message that we started with on wealth, I click it and I'm right back in that message, building that message, and so on and so forth.